Into your hands, almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate savior, we place ourselves, receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps. Into your hands, O hovering spirit, we place ourselves, take us and fashion us after your image. Let us comfort, let your comfort strengthen us and your fire cleanse us. Into your hands, almighty God, we place ourselves, gather us in your light eternal. Spirit be with you all and also with you. Open our ears, Lord, to heed your will for our lives. Help us not only to hear, but to listen and understand with our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 5. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning, he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. Psalm 40, verses 1 through 8. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. 
He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, here I am. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. The lesson from Matthew, the 13th chapter. Then the disciples came and asked him, why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And that is a very dangerous thing because many people have thought that there was an esoteric tradition passed down from the disciples and the apostles that was not written but we believe in the written text. So we go on to say that this is a passage about the people who do hear, whether in parables or in any other fashion, but do not hear. But to them it was not been given, for to those who have more will be given and they will have an abundance, but from those who have nothing, even that that they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, you will indeed listen, but never understand and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull and their ears are hard of hearing and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. So indeed the prophets, Isaiah among them, faces people who do not listen, do not understand, and thus do not receive the blessings of God. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Ancient Greek philosophy notes that we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. And Jesus reminds us that we sometimes hear but don't listen, listen but don't understand, and opening our ears isn't as easy as it sounds. Part of that's because there is so much noise. And by that, I just mean all of the constant bombardment of things that want our attention. That comes to us through all of our senses. But um, how many of you, when uh, you need to, um, to focus on your driving, turn off the radio? Yeah, me too. Why do we do that? Um, it's it's this. It's connected. Our our brains process so much information at a time, and when when we want to focus, the invitation is to to kind of remove some of the other background noise that gets in the way of hearing. I think about uh, the wonderful story of the prophet who's who's listening for God, right? And 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 there's an earthquake and there's there's roaring thunder and all these things. But then then in the silence, 
God speaks in a still, small voice. And in order to hear the still, small voice, we have to be listening. And to listen that hard, we have to give ourselves some space to do that listening. Prayer is an invitation to talk to God, to have a conversation with God. And really the invitation with prayer is that we spend as much time listening as we do talking, right? I, I love this exercise with confirmation kids when we talk about prayer because um, so often, especially as teenagers, but I do the same thing when I'm trying to uh, get somewhere and the light's turning yellow in front of me. But, you know, those, those prayers where we have that quick list for God, but it's like that one-sided conversation of that friend that calls you and tells you all about their day and all the terrible things that happened. And, oh my gosh, can you believe it? Oh, I got to go. Bye. <laughs> Without ever once saying, how are you? Tell me about your day. I'd like to listen right? Prayer is as much an opportunity to speak to God as to listen to God and listen for God and that still small voice that God speaks to us. And so our invitation in Lent is we're working on clearing out the stuff that gets in the way of the relationship God wants to have with us. And there's an invitation to, to take some intentional time to turn down the rest of the background noise so that we can just be with God and listen. Our gathering hymn this morning is Dearest Jesus at Your Word. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of all life, when we cannot see the beauty of your creation, open our eyes that all living things thrive and grow. When we neglect the poor, the sick, and the grieving, open our hands to do your work in the world. When we ignore the cries, when we ignore the cries of injustice in our midst, open our ears that all will know your love. When we are hardened against our neighbor, open our hearts and heal our resentment. When we are close to the grace you long to give us, open our lives and turn us to follow in the way of the cross. I invite you to offer prayers at this time. Thank you for the life of Judy McGinn. Surround her family with comfort. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now let us pray the way that our Lord has taught us to pray. Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación. Y líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria, ahora y siempre. Amén. Listen, listen, God is calling to the word inviting. Offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling to the word inviting. Offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news. That he came to save us and set us free. Listen, God is calling to the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, listen, God is calling to the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Let nothing 
none be forgotten throughout the world. In the triune name of God, go and baptize. Listen, Listen God is calling to the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Listen, Listen God is calling to the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Help us to be faithful, standing steadfast, walking in your precepts, led by your word. Listen, Listen God is calling, through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort and joy. Listen, Listen God is calling, through the word inviting, Offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Friends, go into the world with eyes open to the transforming light of Christ, hands open to serve those you meet, ears open to the call of the Spirit, hearts open to the bountiful love of God, and lives open to follow Christ to the cross. The God who opened for us the way of everlasting life bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.